The U.S. Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, has approved what many are calling a breakthrough drug to prevent, emphasis on prevent, HIV. The drug is called lenacapavir, and it is not a pill. It's an injection that a patient takes twice a year, and that's key. It's also very effective. Clinical trials found highly effective as prophylaxis. Uh, phase three of the clinical trial, 100% prevention among women, 99.9% prevention among men. There is a lot of excitement about this, and Dr. Isaac Bogosh knows all about it, epidemiologist, infectious diseases expert. This is an area he has a lot of expertise in. Good morning and welcome exceptionally on early Thursday morning. Before we learned how expert you are on COVID and all things infectious diseases, HIV was a real uh, an area of interest and study for you, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a, a big HIV clinic in uh, the hospital I work at uh, that I proudly a, a member of and uh, started well i mean in 2013 when hiv prevention started to become um more mainstream and integrated because we had newer techniques to prevent hiv with something called hiv pre-exposure prophylaxis prep prep exactly i started the first hiv prevention clinic in canada housed out of the toronto general hospital and remember for people watching who don't know what prep is this is People who are at risk for HIV acquisition, who do not have HIV, we can put them on medications ahead of time, and that way they don't get HIV, or their risk for HIV is significantly reduced. So now this has been integrated in Canada for, since around, well, we started our clinic in 2013. Thankfully, PrEP has expanded throughout much of Canada, and wherever PrEP is being rolled out, rates of HIV are plummeting. Okay, so this is what we already have in place. Added to that reality, which you've been involved in from the very earliest stages, comes lenacapavir. PrEP is a pill. This is not a pill. Tell us about it. Yeah, this is exciting because this is an, an injection. It's a subcutaneous injection, and it's a long-lasting injection, meaning someone can get a subcutaneous injection, and they will have protection for about six months. So theoretically, someone who's at risk for HIV infections can get an injection twice a year and it will significantly reduce, we can't say eliminate, but will significantly reduce their risk for HIV acquisition. Two shots a year. In contrast, what we have now is pills. And again, not everyone's adherent to medications. Compliance and can be exactly, an issue. Exactly. We have sometimes people just won't adhere to their medications for whatever reason. Uh, and number two is we do have an injection available in Canada. It's not widely available, but it's given every two months, which is, again, you have to come in every two months for this injection, and it's not rolling out significantly, I would say, for HIV prevention in Canada. But a shot twice a year has significant potential to expand HIV prevention uh, to people who, for whatever reason, have difficulty coming into clinic, have difficulty adhering to medications. Um, but like anything else, you know, I think we have to temper this. It's great to have another tool in the toolbox for HIV prevention, but... Okay, what are the buts? What are the obstacles and the challenges? It does nothing if no one can access it. If it's a bazillion dollars a year <laughs> or it's not covered by insurance and no one can get it, great we have a good tool that's not usable so access is one the other thing too is we have to recognize that many people are happy taking a tablet a day mm -hmm. um and and they might not want to use this or you know you're getting a shot every six months that's a something whopping really shot. Is. Okay, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Let's not let's and not that forget that. that's going to be something that deters some people. Exactly. Okay. And there's some people that might not want that. It's it's an option and it's additional it's an additional option and I think it'll be useful. And if people do choose that option, it will be effective. We should it is not a vaccine just Correct. to be clear because we would talk a lot about vaccine hesitancy. This is a prevention, a treatment as a tool is used. We know where the HIV rates are still so concerning in the world sub-Saharan Africa. What are the global implications of something like this? Yeah, I mean, I think that's really where the money is. Uh, and when we see rates of HIV and, and, and the prevalence of HIV and the incidence, the number of new cases, the highest area is in Southern Africa. Um, and coupled with that are the significant cuts uh, this year to many global public health programs, including HIV programs. From uh, the United States. From the United States, mm -hmm. th through USAID and other mm -hmm. programs, which really 
is it's going to put a lot of people at risk for infection. And now you have a tool that is pretty simple to administer. You just got to come in twice a year. That seems to be very effective. I mean, this could be a, a remarkable tool for helping curb the epidemic, especially in uh, Southern Africa, where we know the rates of HIV are highest and where there's been remarkable progress over the last 15 years. But Unfortunately, some of that will be undone with recent cuts to tremendous programs that have been built over, over the last 20 years. In those countries and especially in women. Yes, right. yes. And, and you know, I th I'm glad you brought up women because oftentimes that's, uh, for lack of a better word, a, a, a neglected area of mm -hmm. HIV treatment and HIV prevention. And, uh, and this, is, this, this will be a great tool in, in, in everybody, but especially, okay. especially in women. Yeah. So lots of potential, lots of question marks in terms of how people will actually access, will they be able to pay. This is FDA approval. What will we see in Canada and when might we see it here? Yeah, great point. So, you know, obviously <laughs> we have to go through the same process here in Canada. Mm -hmm. So Health Canada is going to have a look. There'll likely be recommendations for um, who will be uh, who this drug will be uh, available for, and then once you know there's approval and then there's coverage. So it's one thing to have a drug approved, but then it's going to be expensive. So is it going to be covered by? Uh, various provincial programs, by various private insurance programs, and ultimately, with time, we usually see coverage expand for uh, for newer treatments that are that are approved in Canada. So, I think it's going to take a little bit of time, but again, it's not going to change everything. It's just another helpful tool in our toolkit to prevent HIV that's coming through the pipeline. Okay, Dr. Bogosh, thank you. We did not know about your history with that. That's pretty extraordinary. The very first HIV prevention clinic in the country started by Dr. Bogosh in Toronto in 2013. So thank you for telling us about this.